House of Representatives approves restructuring of extra 1 trillion Naira waste and means request. Banks to accept old Naira notes after deadline. INEC announced for scarcity may affect election logistics. On business news, NMPC takes over four air wells from ADAX. On international scene, death toll from Pakistan mosque bombing rises to 100. On sport update, Arsenal completes the transfer of Joginho. Hello and welcome to Standard Voice Television Newsroom. I'm Mukhtar Mohammed. The House of Representatives has approved the requested restructuring of 1 trillion Naira additional waste and means advances for implementation of the 2022 Supplementary Appropriation Act passed by the National Assembly. For more, our correspondent Zainab Ablasi reports. President Mohammed Buhari has requested an approval of 23.7 trillion Naira. But the House is seeking further engagement with the executive to allow for thorough and detailed work and submission on the larger part of the advance, which amount to 22.72 trillion Naira. The House, like Senate, said it will consider the 22.72 trillion Naira after properly engaging the executives. On December 28, the Senate stepped down the restructuring of the 22.7 trillion Naira ways and mains request until more documents were presented for further legislative action. Zainab Abdulwasi, you're reporting for Standard Voice Television. The Central Bank of Nigeria Governor Godwin Emefiele has met with the House of Representatives ad hoc committee working on the new currency policy. The import of our engagement with you today was based on the mandate of the House of Representatives through a motion that was raised on the floor addressing the concern of the Nigerian people, the peers of the Nigerian people, through the House of Representatives. The House had invited the CBN governor over the crisis caused by the new NERA notes. For more, Samira Ibrahim has the details. The committee headed by the House leader, Al-Hassan Adudugua, was set up to liaise with the CBN and commercial banks on the implementation of the policy. It had earlier invited MEPLE to speak on issue and called for extension of the January 31st deadline, which would have expired by now. However, the CBN had already extended the period by 10 days to enable Nigerians to deposit their old 1,000 Naira, 500 and 200 Naira notes. We're beginning to see some of the benefits. Like I said, inflation last month somewhat trended, at least it's not rising, it's not stagnating, it's somewhat moderating. And we're thinking and expecting that they will continue to moderate. Exchange rate will still be relatively stable. And what we're even hoping with this exercise, that Naira can even get stronger. Earlier, Mr. Emefele informed the committee that his inability to appear before it was not intended to undermine the committee or the House. He said he was absent on two occasions because in the first instance, he was away on official leave, while on the other, he was part of the presidential delegation to Dakar, Senegal. The CBN governor said currency management was the prerogative of the Apex Bank as enshrined in its Establishment Act 2007. He said it is a global practice that the nation's currency undergoes a periodic change, which was not done in the last 16 years. In a related development, the CBN governor has announced that banks will continue to accept the old Naira notes even after the deadline for swapping with the newly designed currency notes. That's the report, Samira Ibrahim reporting for Standard Voice Television. In the latest Corruption Perception Index ranking, released on Tuesday by the Transparency International, Nigeria has again fallen fourth place on the list. According to the report, although the country maintained its previous ES score of 24 out of 100 points, it however fell from 150 to 154th position out of 180 countries assessed in the 2022 ranking. Newsmen had previously reported that in past years, Nigeria had experienced a consecutive drop in the CPI ranking, scoring 26 in 2019, 25 in 2020 assessment, and 24 in the last 2021 record. Chairman of Transparency International, Delia Rubio, 
explained that global corruption levels had been stagnant for 11 years in a row. The country comparison for 2022, CPI, Nigeria ranked 150 out of 180 countries compared to 154 uh, on the 2021 Corruption Perception Index result. Nigeria maintained its previous score of 24, which is lowest score on the Corruption Perception Index since 2012. Uh, this suggests a slowdown in the steady decline observed in the previous uh, three Corruption Perception Index uh, results in Nigeria. The chairman said corruption has made the world a more dangerous place as governments have collectively failed to make progress against it. The Independent National Electoral Commission has announced that the current first scarcity in the country might affect logistic arrangements for the February 25th and March 11th general elections. For more, Jamila Ibrahim has the details. Chairman of the Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, made this known in Abuja at a consultative meeting with the transport unions, such as the Nigerian Association of Road Transport Owners and the National Union of Road Transport Workers, amongst others. Professor Yakubu told leaders of the unions that the Commission shares their concern about the first situation in the country and its impact on transportation on Election Day saying their arrangements may be negatively affected by the known availability of the products and that the Commission will meet the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited to look into ways to ameliorate the situation. Secondly, to conclude on the modalities for the certification of vehicles by the Federal Road Safety Corps in the light of the emphasis we place on the safety of election personnel and materials. The issue of logistics has been a perennial problem in election administration in Nigeria. That is why for three electoral cycles, INEC has collaborated with the road transport unions to address the problem. Professor Yakub also urged the transporters to be neutral and non-partisan as they commute INEC staff to and from polling units. Jamila Ibrahim Dusara reporting for Standard Voice Television. The Zamfara State Commissioner of Police, C.P. Kolo Yusuf, has visited the temporary site of the NYSE orientation camp located at the government Science Secondary School, Guso. The visit was aimed to strengthen the existing security emplacement of the camp with a view to ensuring security and safety of all the core members as well as the staff of the NYSE in the camp. The Commissioner, while addressing the core members, urged them to be conscious of their security both in the camp and at their areas of primary assignment, assuring them of prompt response to any distress call and advised them not to hesitate to report any suspicious character to the police. The NYC state coordinator expressed appreciation to the CP and promised to work hand-in-hand -hand with the police to ensure his free orientation exercise. Governor Abubakar Atiku Bagudu of Kibi State has renewed his commendation to the Nigerian Army and other security agencies for their gallantry and sacrifice in protecting the territorial integrity of the nation and restoring security and peace in the Federation. For more, our correspondent Sumaya Dosara has the details. Senator Baguru spoke while receiving the new General Officer Commanding Gok 8th Division of the Nigerian Army Sokoto, Major General G. M. Mutkut, represented by Deputy Governor Red Colonel Sama E. Leo Bidabai that the governor was particularly happy about the role of the army in the fight against bandits in Zuru Emirates and other parts of the state, which has helped in reducing the influx of internally displaced persons, but requested for additional troops to patrol areas prone to attack. The governor also commended the outgoing GOG and effect of incumbent Brigadier Commander Gustavo and the commanding officer Duke Kobarax, bringing KB for their meritorious services in the defense of their fatherland in ongoing fight against bandits. He affirmed commitment to the provisions of necessary materials, logistics and financial support to soldiers and other members of the armed forces in the conduct of their operations. Sumaya Dosa reporting for TV News. The Emir of Duse Jigawa State, Dr. Nuhu Muhammad Sanusi, is dead. This was confirmed by Sarkin Father of Duse Emirates, Al-Haji Wad Al-Haji, via a telephone call. The late Emir died at the age of 77 after a protracted illness in Abuja. Governor Babagana Umar Azulum has unveiled a water project with capacity to store and distribute 
250,000 litres of water at Mboa village in Chibok local government area of southern Borno state. The commissioned water project will serve over 40,000 residents of not just Mboa village but also of Chibok town and neighbouring communities. The water facility was designed with a storage capacity of a 750,000 litre surface tank and a 500,000 litre overhead tank with water sources from 20 motorized boreholes. Similarly, the governor also, after the water project, commissioned a senior secondary school in Gumsuri, a community in Damboa local government area. Now on business news. The Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited said it has taken over the operation of production sharing contract for four oil wells from Adax Petroleum Development Nigeria Limited. In a statement on Tuesday, the NMPC said it amicably terminated Adax's 24-year PSC relationship. It said three months after the execution of the Adax transfer settlement and exit agreement for the PSC oil blocks, OMLs, 123-124 and 126-137, operated by ADAX, all closing obligations have been concluded and the assets have been transferred to the concessionaire NMPC Limited. While the transfer settlement and exit agreement was signed in November 2022, the transfer of the oil wells to the NMPC took place on Tuesday, January 31, 2023. NMPC Limited has also appointed the transition team lead Mr. Segiru Jajere as the Managing Director of Antan Producing Limited. Now on international news. Medical official has announced that the death toll from a suicide bombing at a mosque in the northwestern Pakistan city of Peshawar has risen to 100 as the South Asian country faces a mountain security challenge from armed groups. Spokesman for the largest medical facility in the city, Mohammed Ashim, in a statement said, so far 100 bodies have been brought to Lady Reading Hospital and the vast majority of those killed in the bombing were police officers. A senior superintendent of police operations in Peshawar, Kashif Aftab Abbasi, told Al Jazeera that more than 225 people were injured in the blast. Authorities said the roof of the mosque, which was located inside a government security compound, collapsed in the bombing and rescuers had to remove mounds of debris to recover many of the bodies. Now on spot update. Arsenal has completed the transfer of the Italian player from Chelsea, Jorginho, for £12 million. Jorginho agreed to an 18-month deal with the option to extend his stay from there. Now his club Chelsea is trying to complete the transfer of Enzo Fernandez from Benfica. Arsenal is the first in the Premier League table and it is expected that the arrival of Jorginho will give them more opportunities to tie their midfield. Similarly, PSG are negotiating with Chelsea to consider the possibility of signing Hakim Ziyech. Ziyech is one of the Moroccan players who shined in the World Cup held in Qatar. But he has also played four games for Chelsea in the Premier League so far this year. Also, PSG is negotiating with Inter Milan on defender Milan Skriniar, whose contract is about to expire this year. Ziyech was Chelsea's first purchase since the ban on buying players in 2020 was lifted. And that's all we have in news updates for today. But before we go, a recap of the major headlines. House of Representatives approves restructuring of extra 1 trillion Naira waste and means request. Banks to accept old Naira notes after deadline. INEC announced for scarcity may affect election logistics. On business news, NMPC takes over four oil wells from ADAX. On international scene, death toll from Pakistan mosque bombing rises to 100. On Sport Update, Arsenal completes the transfer of Joginho. 
Thanks for watching. That's the news. I'm Umkutsu Muhammad. Have a nice day.